Good morning and welcome to the channel everyone. My name is Michael for AudiWorld.com and today we're taking a look at the 2021 Audi SQ5, a muscular mid-sized SUV with a turbocharged V6 engine, snappy handling, sports car seating, and a sumptuous interior. Now, it ate what you called cheap starting at over $50,000 and as tested at around 72 grand, but it may be one of the best all-around family vehicles on the market for enthusiasts who know that life's too short to drive boring. Hashtag no minivans. Let's back up and first define the Q5 series as a whole. Recently refreshed, the mid-sized luxury Q5 is available with two engine options, three trim levels, Premium, Premium Plus, and Prestige, and two body styles, SUV and Sportback. The entry-level engine is a 16-valve turbocharged 2.0-liter four-cylinder making 261 horsepower and 273 foot-pounds of torque. This configuration is good for a 5.7-second 0-60 to 60 run. Or you can opt for the hybrid system, which boosts the same 2-liter up to 362 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. This drops the 0-60 to 60 run down to about 5 seconds, but it's also the heaviest of the bunch. Stepping up the ladder, we have the sportier SQ5. Under the SQ5's hood, you'll find a turbocharged 3-liter V6 pumping out 349 horsepower and the same 369 pound-feet of torque. Yes, this is the same engine from the S4 and S5. You'll also see it in the Q7 as an optional engine. And yes, it's less powerful than the hybrid Q5, but the SQ5 at 4,288 pounds weighs about 330 pounds less than a similarly equipped hybrid, which gives the SQ5 a straight line advantage and uh, an Audi quoted zero to 60 time of about 4.7 seconds. By the way, just in my testing, I was able to get just about 5.4 seconds. Don't know if I did anything wrong, but um, that's just what I experienced. Now there are of course other variances we could discuss between the Q5 and the SQ5, but uh, here's the basic way to think of it. If you just want the luxury, comfy, mid-size SUV, the Q5 is more for you. And if you're looking for that sporty factor, that kind of performance driving dynamics, step up to the SQ5. The SQ5 pricing starts at $52,900. This is a $10,000 premium over the base Q5 engine, but our loaner included the following options. District Green Metallic Paint for $595, the Prestige Package for $9,800. That's gonna get you all the bells and whistles with the radio and the LED lighting and the headlights and the taillights and all those types of different things. Also, the S Sport package for $3,000, dynamic steering for $1,150, the black optic package for $600 plus another $1,000 for the black optic wheels, fine Napa leather seating for $1,000, carbon Atlas inlays for $500, which look absolutely fantastic, and rear side airbags for $350. Why those are not standard, I have no idea, but if you're a parent, probably a good idea to have those. Anyway, toss in destination and delivery, and the MSRP for the vehicle sitting behind me hits $71,790. In and of itself, the SQ5 remains relatively faithful to its Q5 cousins, visually speaking. It's a chunky little SUV that's been smoothed out and carved away from the days of boxes on wheels. But add in the optional black optic package, the larger wheels, and suddenly the SQ5 stands out a little bit more from the pack, more muscular, more menacing. Now, it's not loud and in your face, mind you, but reducing these shiny bits draws your eyes to the SUV's hips and curves in the shiny red brake calipers. The other standout feature on our particular loaner is the paint itself, district green metallic. It's actually a bit of a chameleon. At night and under a cloudy sky, it looks like some type of aftermarket wrap, you know, some type of military style green that's not quite shiny, uh, not quite flat, you know, so think Nardo gray, but for green. But when the sun shines, district green metallic reveals its true nature. This has got a ton of golden metallic flake that shines and simmers and 
Look, in truth, in photos, even in this video, I suspect it's gonna be a love it or hate it type color. But for me, in person, it's a big, big win and it kind of won me over. I don't think I purchased it, but that being said, I do admire what the folks at Audi were doing. And I do think it looks great on this particular SUV with all the black accents. Overall, the SQ5 is a bit of a sleeper, aesthetically speaking, but as configured, it's a sharp SUV that looks terrific, even if it blends in with other Audi products. That being said, I just like the way that the, the black optics pack Package, kind of just makes this thing look a little more menacing and a little bit meaner. Overall, I think it's a cool looking crossover SUV in a world where every other crossover looks exactly the same. I think this one stands out just enough. In a world where sports cars routinely run to 60 in under three seconds, the SQ5 ain't gonna win you any bragging rights. Let's remember this is not an RS model. There actually is no RS in the Q5 realm. Still, with this type of power to weight ratio, it delivers a relatively thrilling experience. Mash the pedal to the ground and the SQ5 leaps forward. Turbocharged torque hits hard and races you up to illegal speeds with only a touch of torque steer. Toss the SQ5 into a corner and it's wonderfully balanced in its lowest suspension modes. Speaking of which, the SQ5 suspension is terrific, both tight and sporty in corners, but able to mask all but the harshest bumps. And if you're looking to do some light off-roading and Emphasis on the word light there, you can actually raise the SQ5 up, which only adds to the sensation of driving on a pillow. That being said, I will say that the steering itself, it's um, its very precise, but the steering is a little bit kind of dead and numb in our uh, modern electric future. Still, and as I said earlier, the SQ5 drives very much like a sports car and sacrifices none of the comfort. And with this power level, it's the type of car or vehicle, or SUV in this case, where you can enjoy its ability all the way at a full 10 tenths, right? You're gonna be encouraged to find its limits because you can mash the pedal and stomp on the brakes, which are very good, and just really enjoy everything this car has to offer from a power perspective, unless it's raining or snowing or otherwise kind of dangerous conditions. Overall, it's a joy to drive, but there are a couple downsides in addition to that steering issue that I mentioned before, the steering feeling, I should say. As with most turbocharged engines, this three liter V6 dies out a little bit early in the rev range, you know, compared to kind of a higher revving V8 or naturally aspirated engine. And so this makes the SQ5 feel really quick off the line. The torque hits pretty early, but a little bit slower when you're up at those highway speeds. And further, the SQ5's transmission, which is very good, it's not the quickest to downshift. When you couple that with the turbo lag, you get this kind of like downshift delay, then the turbo lag, then it hits you when you kind of go up. So there's kind of like a double power kick when you're downshifting and trying to accelerate. The other thing I'd like to see is that I think Audi can do a little bit better than these Pirelli summer tires. I used to have Pirelli's P0s, and even though this car has no problem hooking because of its weight and all wheel drive, I did feel a little bit of squealing, a little bit of loss grip in the cornering with these Pirelli's, and that is something I never feel with the Pilot Sport 4S. So ultimately, I think with slightly better tires, I think the SQ5 could handle even better, which would be even more fun. Overall though, the SQ5 is a blast to drive and that is the primary reason to buy this SUV. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that after its all wheel drive systems, Audis might be best known for their quality interiors. And the SQ5 is no different. The optional fine Napa leather, Quote, quote, quote. It wraps around perfectly bolstered and heated sport bucket seats. The rear seating includes just enough leg and headroom for taller passengers, although not as much as like a similarly sized EV crossover. Touch surfaces and materials aren't the fanciest that Audi offers. You're gonna get those in some more premium level trims, but they're very, very good overall. Over in the tech department, I really like the way that Audi's gauges and infotainment touchscreens look. They're sharp, they're clear, snappy to operate. And I really like the upgraded Prestige stereo sound system. It's this 3D, many, many speaker sound system thing, and it's really good. But I don't like the way that Audi organizes the audio sources. So when you're picking radio or satellite radio or your iPhone or whatever, or, or even jumping back and forth between the Audi interface and your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it's, it's a little bit confusing to kind of pick which one you're getting to. Uh, and speaking of which, the Apple CarPlay is wired only, and a lot of 
uh, folks are moving over to wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. You know, a couple little minor bugs there, but that being said, once you're in CarPlay and it's wired up and everything, it looks and performs terrifically and as it should. And again, the Audi screens in here are really high res and they look terrific. Another negative thing for me is that we're here at the $72,000 SUV and it doesn't include ventilated front seats. If you want that, it's a $600 standalone option called the Warm Weather Package. It includes the cooled seats, ventilated seats, and also some curtains for uh, some of the back windows. Also, the center console layout is a little bit odd to my tastes. There's all these little kind of nooks and crannies to fit things, but there's not the most amount of cup holder storage and they're and most of these little kind of like crevices aren't phone size, so you kind of have to wire your phone up front if you have the older USB-A and run the wire all the way to the back to hold your phone. Or if you have USB-C, you can run it up or you can use the wireless charging pad, which is nice. But overall, it's just a little, little clunky, a little bit busy. And I always find that like if I was using the cup holders, which by the way, they have a heated and cooled cup holder, which is pretty cool. But in terms of the overall ergonomics, it's a little bit clunky and I found wires running places or you're always kind of like bumping into things if you're trying to use the phone holder and the armrest and a cup holder. It's just a, a little crowded, a little bit busy but again that's that's a super tiny nitpick overall like many audi interiors i think this interior is generally excellent like like most others and it's a wonderful place to spend time when you're either driving for fun uh, or for work Wrapping things up with the 2021 Audi SQ5 midsize luxury performance SUV. First up, what do you guys think about it? Are you shopping for one? Do you own one? Tell me about your ownership or your sh shopping or cross shopping experiences. What are you looking at at this price range? If you're into sports cars, you drive stuff that's regularly over 400 horsepower, the SQ5 is not going to blow you away. It's, that being said, it is relatively quick, you know, for a non RS car, nor is the SQ5 going to be for people with larger families. Uh, again, the Q7 sits seven. This is only really gonna sit, you know, four, maybe five people in a pinch, but this is really for a family of two, three, four people. Mid-size crossover SUVs, it's such a boring segment. It's a bunch of fairly practical cars that are kind of slow and roly-poly, and this one just amps it all the way up and makes it like a an Audi sports sedan. In all the great Audi ways, tight suspension, quick acceleration, excellent handling, lovely interior, very comfortable, very tight, very luxurious and fancy and very fun. Uh, so that's my big takeaway. This is a super fun SUV and I really enjoyed our time with it. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Thank you to Audi for the loaner and uh, we will see you all on the next video. If you care to throw us a like and a subscribe, that would be amazing. And you can also check out our Facebook pages and our socials and our actual website. Links in the description below. Cheers.